Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't we excited to be here on a good Friday to celebrate the sacrifices of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King. It is a wonderful thing to celebrate. My Lord, when I think about if there wasn't a good Friday, where would I be? Thank you, God, for what it is that you have done and the sacrifice that has been made for each and every one of us. I'm so glad to see you standing on your feet. That means you are in a position to praise and to celebrate. So we're going to kick it off with worship to our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh. Come on, let's sing that out. Come on, one more time with everybody say. is holy and reigns with splendor I God Yahweh the sovereign king is full of wonder I God Yahweh everybody say Yahweh Together we'll sing, yeah. His matchless power, infinite wisdom, our God, Yahweh. None can describe him or compare to him, our God. Yahweh, all together we say Yahweh.
thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. a brutal death for us. We're here to worship what you've done for us, Lord. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. You're hidden Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven. Oh! 
thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Forever. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are we are healed. Dear Lord and Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment and this opportunity, Father God, where two churches are uniting to become one, to worship the one. So, Lord, we thank you, Father God, that what you have done for us, dear Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you took it upon yourself to die on the cross for us, dear Lord, for a wretched man like me, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that it's your blood that covers us. And we thank you that it's your blood that saves us. And we thank you, Father God, that it's your blood that washes my sins away. Dear Lord and Father, I pray over the service right now. I pray, Father God, for those who are joining us for the first time, who are experiencing you for the first time, that you will bless them, Lord, that you would give them a word in due season, Father God. Open their ears to hear. Allow their hearts to receive your word today, Father God. I pray for those who are on the backsliding, dear Lord, who know you, Father God, but got lost along the way. I pray that you will touch them, Father God, that you will remind them who you are, Father God, and that you will heal them right now and that you will meet them where they are. I pray for the pastor, dear Lord. I pray that he will bring a word that is in due season as well, dear Lord, that you will sit him down and you will use him, Father God, that it's your words that will flow through him, Father God. Use him now. Lord, for your kingdom. We thank you. We invite your Holy Spirit to continue to be upon us, dear Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give God some praise in the house? Can we give God some praise? Oh, hold on. That, that's all right for me, but it's Good Friday. Is there anybody in here today that you you just want to give him the glory? You want to give him the honor? You want to give him the praise? It's Good Friday. 
The world may look down on it, but if you believe in Jesus Christ, you understand that this is where it begins. This is how the story begins. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to God. Amen, amen. You, you may be seated. Amen. It is good to just be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just want to, I, I want to welcome Greater Zion here today. Uh, welcome to the spring. Welcome to the spring. Welcome to the spring. We, we celebrate you. We, we are doing this on purpose. So long we've been isolated in your church and my church, but it's really just God's church. One, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. So whether you're Baptist or whether you're Methodist or you're Pentecostal or you're Apostolic, we major in the minors. Here's what we all can agree on. Did he die for your sins? Was he buried? And did he, is he coming back for you, huh? But did he rise for you? Is there anybody in here that he rose from the grave? Hallelujah. All that other stuff, speaking in tongues, they ain't going to get me in. Shouting ain't going to get me in. Foot washing ain't going to get me in. All that other stuff ain't going to get me in. I just got to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Amen? That's all that matters. Here, here, here it is. Ready? D-B-R. If you take a picture tonight, just put D-B-R in there. The death. The burial and what? The resurrection. That's all that matters right there, y'all. Amen. We, we, we're excited just to be here. Um, uh, we got a preacher for tonight. Amen. We, we, we met some years ago at a, at, a, at a little conference that we love to go to in Dallas, Texas called E.K. Bailey. International Conference of Expository Preaching. Uh, I've been going since probably about 1999, 8, 98, 99, probably about 20, 25 years. I've only missed two, but it's just a time for, for, for pastors and for preachers to get away and, and for the pastor to be fed and the pastor to be ministered to and, uh, and so we, we, we met down there some years ago, um, saw him again this year. We, uh, uh, Pastor, we got to get a gator on the table. We got to get some gator on the table, you know, get, got to get some gator on the table. Got to get some gator on the table. I had my folks eating it. They, they, they thought it was chicken nuggets. I uh, like, uh, <laughs> but it was gator. It was gator, but that gator was good. Amen. He has been uh, the pastor at Greater Zion. He just had his one year anniversary. I was over there celebrating with him. Uh, transition in in the middle of the pandemic, y'all. Y'all don't understand. I came in the pandemic. He came in the pandemic. Y'all don't understand how rough that is. Transitioning in in the middle of the pandemic. He's been preaching the gospel for 17 years. He's married to his beautiful wife. I'm going to let him introduce her. They've got one daughter together. And I just found this out. He is going to the master's program at the Samuel DeWitt uh, Proctor School of Preaching down in Virginia Union. My good friend, Reverend Herman Hawkins, just graduated from that school. Uh, me and Herman, we, we go back some years ago. So I'm excited about that. I just want him to come, y'all. I want him to bring a word. I want him to be himself tonight. All right, can, can we just let him be himself tonight? Amen. All right. So here's what I want to do. I want to do. I'm, 
I want to take up an offering. Here it is. Before we, before you move ushers, before you move, before you do anything. We're going to only take up one offering. I ain't trying to take up two offerings. I ain't trying to empty your pockets out. But here's what we want to do in this one offering. We want you to be a blessing to the man of God. Get an envelope, check the guest preacher spot, and make sure that you're being a blessing to the man of God. We want to make sure that he walks out of here a little heavier than what he did when he came in here. Amen. Uh, he, he's got a ministry of feeding his wife and his child. Amen. And we want to make sure we contribute to that. Amen. All right, so if you need an envelope, raise your hands. Our ushers will gladly, gladly serve you. Amen. If you want to sow a seed in the day spring ministry, we, we believe that this is fertile ground and that it will return to you some 30, some 60, and 100 fold. Amen. Amen. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to let y'all give. I want y'all to be generous. Amen. If you, if, if you don't have any money on you and you just want to cash app us, Amen. You can cash up at Apples at, uh, can we put that up on the screen? Hashtag, uh, there it is up on the screen right there. I ain't got to go through that. Cash sign, Dayspring, DSM, and cash app is there. Just put in your comments, guest preacher, and we'll make sure that he gets every penny that you give. Amen. I promise you that. Amen. I promise you that. There are five ways in which to give. They're up on the screen. Uh, you can you can give uh, through text. You can give going to our website, and you can give that way, or you can give through Cash App. Amen. Whatever you do, don't put it in the snail mail. This mail moves slow up here, y'all. I just need to let y'all know. I was waiting on something, and it came three months later. I said, "My God!" I tell people, "Don't mail me nothing no more." Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you what is rightfully yours. We ask you now to bless the offering. Bless the offering that blesses the house, but bless the offering that blesses the manservant on tonight, Father. Lord, you do what you desire to do. Press down, shaking together, and running over into our bosoms. We thank you for it right now. We pray now for the preacher that your hand would be on him. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to let a uh, Greater Zion praise team. Y'all can transition in. Y'all transition in. And after they get finished ministering to us in song, the next voice that you will hear will be none other than Pastor Trey DuPont from Greater Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Welcome in. know Jehovah is his name. He's a mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is his name. Yeah. 
no other. Yeah. Yeah. Live like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Strip like no other. Strip like no other. And it reaches to me. You are my
are my strength. Strength like no other. Reach us to me. Come on, if you're in the house of the Lord and you know that he is your savior, if you know that he died for you, if you know that he rose, come on, let's give our hands together and give God a praise that he so richly deserves. He is a great God and he's worthy of a great praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's lift our hands all over this place. Come on, you're worthy, God. You're worthy. Give me, turn up the keyboard. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Come on, can we take a moment just to enter into worship just a little bit? Can we press our way? Is that all right? I dare somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, I love you. Lord, you're worthy. God, you are worthy. You're worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of the glory, God. You're worthy, Lord. We woke up this morning. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are God. You are altogether worthy. You are altogether lovely. You are altogether wonderful. Is anybody here to worship? Is anybody here to worship? Not for form, not for fashion, not for any other reason, but to lift up the name of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will, turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter 19 you told me to be myself right i'm gonna try my best i want to acknowledge as you guys are turning to john chapter 19 um the shepherd of this house pastor daryl godlock we want to celebrate him can i tell you man we can do better than that day spring you have an amazing pastor he is a gifted pastor. He has a heart after God. He is gracious in his service unto the Lord. And we met years ago. And so I thank him for remembering me. Uh, there are a few things I've had at Greater Zion that your pastor did not come to. And that type of support cannot be found anywhere. Amen. I'm a living witness. I've been here eight years and I have not had that kind of support from a neighboring pastor. And so I thank God for you and your very wonderful wife um, for this opportunity to be here. Amen. Uh, and I can't wait for your wife and my wife to connect. Uh, I hear the women's ministry over here is booming. And the, all right, ladies. And the women's ministry over at Greater Zion is booming. Amen. And so what a wonderful opportunity that will be. Um, to be able to grow together. To my daughter, who is, is here, and uh, she is my biggest cheerleader. She's going to tell me if I do all right. She's also going to tell me if I don't. Amen. Greater Zion, if you are here, let me see you and or hear you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you guys could have gone anywhere else, but you decided to worship with us tonight. Uh, and, and, and Dr. Godlock was right. Uh, both of our churches are notorious for not fellowshipping with other churches. And so what a blessing it is for us to come together and fellowship in the grace that is found only in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I know I talk close to the mic, but if you could turn it up just a hair uh, as you are on uh, the Gospel of John, starting in the chapter of 19, I'm going to read for your hearing two verses, if you will allow me to do my very best, starting at verse 16. It says, then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. I'm going to read 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his word. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we honor you. 
We ask, Lord, that you would send down your anointing that might make preaching easier. We ask, Lord, that you would send down your presence that make living worthwhile. We ask, Lord, that every humbled heart will hear a word from you to encourage their walk. We ask, Lord, if there's someone in here that has yet to commit to you that this is the day they do it. Move upon the altar of their heart in this very moment. Lord, you begin to penetrate all that is interrupting their yes to you so that they may be son and or daughter of the most high God. We thank you, Lord, because this is a good Friday. We thank you, Lord, because this is a good day. We thank you, Lord, because this is the day our lives have changed forever. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For a moment, you all may be seated. For a moment, I want to share from the very thought of the beauty of an ugly cross. The beauty of an ugly cross. Now, if you don't know me, let me introduce myself. I am just an urban kid from the city of Wilmington on the west side. Amen. And so what I need you to do as I'm preaching is you talk back to me. We'll be able to get done a little faster. Amen. I am a country church goer and I like for you to preach with me. Amen. So if you help me preach, we won't be in here till midnight. Uh, Amen. If you help me preach, we'll be all right. So we'll be good if you help me preach. I want to spend a little time talking about the beauty of an ugly cross. I need you to know that there was an opportunity for a father and a son to go to a museum and look at the local art that was derived from many budding artists. As they were walking through this very elite upscale museum, the father heard murmurings around as if everything was so beautiful. The sculptures were beautiful. The paintings were beautiful. Everything was so systematically beautiful. But his son, He saw one particular painting up on the wall. And while everyone around him called it beautiful, the son says, Daddy, why are they lying? That painting is ugly. That painting is ugly. The boy, he saw the sign, he saw the painting, but because he could not read, he could not see the sign detailing exactly what that painting represented. And so what he saw on the mural, what he saw on the canvas uh, was what presumed to be ugly in his sight. Uh, But if he had only been able to read the caption uh, that all messy things uh, might start off ugly, but God's got a way to turn your ugly into something beautiful and what looked ugly to the boy with a little bit of understanding uh, began to look beautiful to those that knew better i'm here only because uh, we have notoriously called this day good friday and it puzzled me sometimes It's hard to call a day Good Friday when your Savior is pinned up on the cross. It's hard to call a day Good Friday when the man you pledge your allegiance to is to be said no more. It is hard to understand. If you were to go back and ask these first century believers that the man that healed, that the man that delivered, that the man that set free, that the man that gave sight to the blind is now dying in front of them. If you had nudged one of them and say, isn't this a good Friday? I will tell you that they could not agree. So when we're looking now at an ugly cross, as we're looking now at a beautiful cross, I need you to know that in order for the cross to be made beautiful, it at first has to be understood as deeply ugly. I'm tired of trying to pacify the cruelty of the cross so that it makes sense for modern believers because they are offended by the blood and the gore and the flesh and the thorns and the whipping and the gnashing and the crying and the grief that comes on Calvary's cross. We have to understand that we don't get to claim the beauty of the cross until we first acknowledge its ugliness. Oh, I wish I had a praying church that was praying with me because I know you came to church today and you put on your very good clothes and you put on your very good Mac and or Fenty makeup because you wanted to come up with your best self forward. But your best self is only understood because you know how bad it's been. 
I don't know about you, but I asked an old married couple. They had been married for 45 years, and they said the question was asked, what is the trick to being so happy and to being married for so long? And this man, the husband, answered with great theology and says, just stay married. Because what is ugly to start gets beautiful after a while. The trials that tried to break you become the testimony to why you stuck together. If you learn how to live long enough, the storms of your youth become your battle scars of your future. And you'll be able to declare that you got over because of God's help. The history of the cross is intended to be offensive by nature. It is the most gruesome, the most horrible way for anybody to be put to death, which is why the Romans decided to use crucifixion as the way they would kill those who offend them. The cross was so offensive, Rome stole it and perfected it, but they declared that no Roman citizen whatever be put to death on a cross. Can you imagine a a system so offensive that you want everyone else to die on it, but your people are too good to die that way? It was so offensive the Jews didn't kill anyone that way. They, they, the, the Jews would uh, toss you into a hole about 11 feet deep, and they would, they would have a boulder, and they would crash it on your head. I'm sorry, young people. It is a very ugly cross. Uh, and the Jews even felt uh, that their mechanism for taking the life of criminals uh, wasn't harsh enough, uh, which is why they turned it over unto a Roman Empire. The beauty of an ugly cross. You know, it's hard to understand the beauty uh, and ugly at the same time. Like, it's hard uh, to understand bitter and sweet. It's difficult uh, to understand uh, how both things can exist at the same time. Until you go and get a a piece of dark chocolate. And as soon as you eat that dark chocolate, you realize that dark chocolate is both bitter and sweet. It's hard to understand bitter and sweet until you go and you make your wife mad and then you realize that you can be bitter. Oh, I'm sorry. And sweet. We, 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 we understand that bitter springs and springs, uh, fresh water springs, can't come out the same spout. But in death, cross and Calvary, Golgotha can be both bitter and sweet. But you don't appreciate the sweet until you understand bitter. You don't understand bitter until you can relate it to sweet. Just like you don't know dark days until you've had sunshine. Just like you don't appreciate the sun until you've had some rainy days. Just like your good days, you don't know outweigh your bad days until you realize what a bad day looks like. Oh, I wish I had somebody that says contrary to popular belief, ugly and beautiful can exist at the same time. Ugly and beautiful can operate as they've done on the cross. But I've got to let you know just two points and then I'll take my seat. Uh, That Calvary was ugly. Calvary was ugly because uh, the place was ugly. This place was called Golgotha. It was interpreted in the Hebrew as the place with the skull. In the Latin, it was understood to be at Calvary. Not only did it look like a skull, but it was littered by the skulls of dead men. Yeah, yeah, it's ugly because the place uh, was ugly. This place uh, was littered with skulls, and it was detailed uh, with the death and the stench of death. It was where you brought men not to live, uh, but it was where you brought men to die. If y'all just sit with me through the ugly, I promise you we'll get to the pretty after a while. They had to witness the deaths of thousands of men. Uh, Jesus wasn't the only one to die at Golgotha, and he wasn't the only one to die on the cross. Uh, The place of the skull was the place where they went uh, right outside of the city to put good men and guilty men to death. 
Not only was it ugly because of the place, it was also ugly because of the history. The mountain that was being uh, defiled by Rome, uh, it was a special place that the Jews had. Uh, you see, this was a hill that was a part of the same ridge uh, where Abraham almost had to offer up his son uh, because God needed to make sure that Abraham loved him uh, more than he loved his offspring. Uh, and so we understand this place uh, to be an ugly place by nature. Genesis 22 is where we find the story of how Abraham was commanded to offer up his son Isaac as a burnt offering to God. And the passage is one of the most clearest Old Testament stories that will remind you of Jesus and the cross. It's not just ugly because the place is ugly, but it's also ugly because the sin is ugly. See, Calvary was God uh, being just uh, in his nature and just in his action uh, because we have a very just God. Uh, he had to do and commend himself uh, to kill those uh, that had been sinners uh, and contrary to God's power. See, the wage of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. As they crucified our Savior, it was because Jesus stood in our place. Jesus took the sin of the world. He took the sin of Middletown and the sin of Harrisburg. He, he took the sin of the ushers and the sin of the praise team. He stepped in on our behalf so that he would take the penalty that you and I had earned. We racked up a debt that we could not pay, uh, but the wrath of God is the only thing uh, that could settle the sin of this world, uh, because without the shedding of blood, uh, there is no remission of sin. The blood represents the new covenant, and if there is no blood, uh, there is no new covenant, and there is no new covenant, then you and I can't walk in the grace of God. This cross was ugly because the place was ugly. It was also ugly because the sin was ugly. Do you not know that when we sin, our sin offends the very sinless God that we serve? It's not just ugly because the place is ugly. It is not just ugly because our sin is ugly. It is also ugly because the crowds are ugly. The people are ugly. While Jesus endured uh, the pain on the cross, those uh, who were at Calvary that day uh, did everything in their power to enhance uh, his suffering, to increase uh, his pain, to cause hurt uh, to him. I know we understand that the scripture just says, and he was crucified, uh, but it doesn't tell you exactly what he went through as uh, he was crucified uh, because Jesus was found sinless in the eyes of Pontius Pilate. Uh, he had to be made ugly before he can even get to the cross uh, and before they could nail him to it. Uh, I need you to know that the cross is ugly because the place is ugly. The cross is ugly because sin is ugly and the cross is ugly because the crowds, the people are ugly. The only compassion he received that day was a fire, a tiny group of people gathered at the foot of Jesus, and it was his mother that was there. It was beloved disciples. And can I say something? Those who had been walking closely with Jesus had all run away. Those who had been following Jesus scattered in fear because the cross was too offensive for them to behold with their own eyes cross is ugly because the place is ugly. The cross is ugly because uh, uh, the, 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 the crowds, the people are ugly. But the cross is ugly not because sin is awful, but we offer the enduring pain that condemns Jesus Christ. You did not have a whip. You did not have a rock. You did not have a nail. But it was your sin and my sin that what hung him up on that tree. When we look at Luke 23 and we see the amazing events as, as Luke would have it, and then we go over and we see how Matthew would describe it, we understood that it was so painful. Not only did we nail him to the cross, uh, but then you had Roman soldiers at the feet of Jesus, uh, and they were raffling off his garments. Uh, you had a sign just above Jesus' head uh, that was established to mock his authority and his 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 uh, his uh, uh, his uh, authority and 
and deity. And all while Jesus chose to die on the cross, not because they made him, but because he chose it. The cross was ugly because the place was ugly. It was ugly because the people were ugly. It was ugly not just because of our sin, but also because of those that surrounded it. When we see it literally become, he became the sin of the world on the cross. It was also ugly because there would be three hours where God would turn his back on himself. Jesus Christ. God the Father up until this point, have always existed together as one. And this moment, God would have to turn his back on himself so that you and I could have access to eternal life. He turned his back to himself so that he would turn his face toward you and I. That's an ugly day when the all-wise father had to turn from himself. And we hear the words of Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? I need you to know that Jesus felt forsaken because he carried your sin and God cannot see and bear witness and exist together where that sin abides. So I need you to see Jesus as more than a cute character in a book. I need you to know that he was a man just like he was God and he was chosen for this. This was not a secondary plan. This was always the plan that God has always established. This was not plan B. This was always plan A. Jesus came to do the will of the Father, which is why in Gethsemane, when he cried blood and coming out of his pores and he says, Father, if it be thy will. If you would let this cup pass for me, he understood that the cup couldn't pass because the only bridge between man and humanity and God would be if Jesus would die on the cross. Jesus had to die on the cross, even though it was an ugly cross. The ugliness is some beauty to it as well. The ugliness doesn't have to die so that the beauty can be seen. I need you to know that what makes the cross beautiful, what makes Calvary beautiful is that there is redemption between man and God. Can I tell you that our sin separated us from God? Our sin made us enemies to God. Our sin made us affront to God. Our sin uh, divided us from God. Our sin uh, hid us from God. And the only acceptable way uh, that we would ever be redeemed uh, is if Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Uh, so we get to sing the song, I've been redeemed, uh, brought with the price uh, since Jesus came into my life. When the Savior breathed his last breath on the cross, redemption had been secured for all those who will place their faith in Christ Jesus. No greater words have ever been, ever been uttered. No greater words have ever been communicated. I understand, he said, Father, for, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I understand that he said, I thirst. But it was when he said, it is finished, that the work on Calvary's cross was done. He says, it is finished. John 19, 30, though his death, he said through his death, he satisfied God's demands for sin. He satisfied God's demand for blood. He asked for a sip of water because he was thirsty. He was given vinegar because they gave him nothing to ease the pain. But when he said it is finished, you can't undo what God has done. When he said it is finished, just one word in the Aramaic, it is finished means uh, the debt has been paid. Uh, you can search Old Testament documents uh, and it would have a little stamp on it. And the stamp would say it is finished. Uh, and otherwise it would say paid in full. I don't know about you, but that's when I understand that that ugly cross became beautiful. When it said that it was paid in full because I was an outcast, but the Lord brought me in.
because I didn't belong, but the Lord engrafted me. Because I hadn't earned my keep, but the Lord paid my way. It was paid, and it was paid in full. Not only was I redeemed back unto God uh, to my initial relationship, uh, but I was restored in Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, but there was a story told a long time ago. Uh, a little boy had a boat, uh, and he made it all by himself, a model boat. Uh, but some kind of way, uh, the winds in the water uh, at the lake the boy was at, uh, it destroyed the boat uh, that the little boy had made. Uh, but his loving father, uh, he took the boat that he made uh, and all of his pieces that he found them in, uh, and he put it back together again. Uh, and the boy said, daddy how were you able to fix the boat and the boy said it's because it's my company and I'm the one that wrote the instructions and so what he did was restore what was broken can I say something there were two thieves on either side of Jesus one thief died a sinner and grace he couldn't find but there was another sinner that says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And then I stopped thinking about that. And I, too, desire for the Lord to remember me. But it makes a different kind of sense to me. I don't just want to jog his memory. But I understand that my members on the cross have been separated because of my sin. Because like the man next to Jesus, I'm guilty. So the punishment was just. But what sin broke in me, I want God to remember me. And so what was once broken, I serve a God that is able to put me back together again. That's where the church is supposed to say amen because I found myself broken in pieces by the sin of my life. But I'm so glad that he remembers me. He restores me. He doesn't just, he doesn't just uh, redeem me. He doesn't just uh, restore me. But I need you to understand that he reconciles me. I don't know if y'all have an old school checkbook, but at the end of the week and or the month, and some of you may have done it every day, you work through your income, you work through the checks you wrote, and you write the checks that were cashed, so that at the end of that time period, you understand that both have been made equal. In other words, you have reconciled what may not have been completely together. When you weigh our sin with the free grace of God, you realize that you don't earn it. You can't afford it. You can't work for it. You can't look pretty enough for it. But what Christ did on the cross, because your scale was imbalanced, he stepped on the side that was weighing you down, and he was able to take some of the weight off of you so that when Christ is done his work and you are standing before God in heaven, he is able to declare to you that you have been reconciled in Jesus Christ. I need you to know that there's beauty in the ugly cross, that the only reason why you are here today is because of that cross. The only reason why you are able to make it today is because of that cross. I know it's an ugly cross, but you can't can't turn away from it because your focus has got to be fixed on the cross. It's like a good movie in the midst of suspense. You can't turn away from that ugly cross. I know you think you're here because you're so pretty and you're degreed, but it's not your degrees that brought you here. It's the cross that brought you here. I know you think you overcame that relationship because you're so wise and savvy, but it's not your wisdom or your savageness. 
this. It is the cross that brought you here. You're attracted to Jesus because he was born in Bethlehem. You are attracted to Jesus because he was reared in Nazareth. You are attracted to Jesus because he was baptized in the Jordan. He performed miracles in the desert. He wept over Jerusalem. He prayed in Gethsemane. And it's Jesus we're talking about. You know his name. He is Adam's redeemer. He is Abel's vindicator. He is Noah's ark. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's God's only begotten. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's oldest brother. He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. He's the action of the spirit. He is the remnant of the Holy Ghost. He is the only begotten of the Father. He is full of grace, full of truth, the blessed one. He is the great I am. He is Alpha and Omega. He is beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the lily and the bride. He is the bright and morning star. He's the stem of Jesse. He's the hope of our future. He's the day spring of Israel. He's the root of David. He's the preeminent in all creation. He's exclusive in heaven authority. He is Jesus. And Jesus died one Friday on the cross, on the hill called Calvary. But I need you to know that he died with my sin in mind. He died with my brokenness in mind. He died with my hangups in mind. And he stayed on that cross every whipping, every gnashing, every thorn, and every nail. He had me in mind. It was beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Because your soul was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, but it's so beautiful that he stepped in, he took your place, and it all happens at the cross. At last indeed, my savior died, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart they were rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day at the cross at the cross it was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. Oh, I don't hear nobody. It is Good Friday. I need you to understand. I need you to know it, huh? that I'm going to cling to that old rugged cross. I'm going to hold to that old rugged cross and finally exchange it for a crown. Is there anybody in this place? Lift your hands. Tell him thank you, because he died, he died, he died, he died. On that cross, there's a story. The father had a painting. He said, boy, don't mess this up, don't touch it. But the son got curious one day. He was bored on spring break. And he wanted to make a puzzle piece. He ripped the father's precious painting in several pieces. The father was furious. He was upset. But what the boy told the father 
is that I drew on the back of your painting. And all we have to do is make my drawing and bring it back to life. And then you'll be able to have what's precious to you. And so the father had tape. He gave it to his son. And piece by piece, the son put the portrait back together again. And it surprised the father because what the father had seen that the son had drew was the call cross at Calvary. And the boy said, see daddy, all you had to do was get the cross right. And what was broken can be back, put back together again. Can I encourage somebody as I take my seat? If you would take the time to get the cross right. Understanding that the cross is the key to all things that liberate us. Get the cross right. See that it's ugly. And you'll understand its beauty. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we stand all over this place? Here I am to worship. Here I am to, here I am. You're my God. You're all together lovely. Come on, can we say, here I am, here I am, here I am, you're my God, come on, sing it like you mean it, you're all together lovely, you're all together you're all together wonderful for to be one more time if you will say here i am here i am here i am to say you're my god you're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all wonderful to be. Come on, here's the next part. Say, I'll never know. I'll never how much it costs. To see my sins upon the cross. Come on, let me hear you say, I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross. Come on, no music, no music. Say, I'll never know how much it costs. Can we worship him? To see upon the cross. I'll never know how 
to see my sin upon the cross. Here I am too. If you're here today, if you're here today and you've never responded to an invitation to accept Jesus Christ, move right now. The cross was for you. Calvary was for you. Just step out from where you are. Amazing church. Amazing people. Will you come? Will you come? This is the day. You're all together, lovely. All together. Is there one? Then we're all saved. If you're looking for a church home, I stand by this brother. And if you need a place to worship and call home, to grow and to serve, I know Day Springs can receive you. Will you come wherever you are? Step outside of your pew. Come on down. Will you come? Amen. Let's put our hands together. We're all saved. We're all in the church home. Can we give God a hand clap of praise on the night? Can we thank him for that word on the night? The beauty of an ugly cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we, can we thank God for the man served tonight? Pastor Trey DuPont. Amen. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. You, 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 you may be seated. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't understand. I, I love good preaching. If we don't understand the pain and the suffering, we we we, we just take it for granted. We we just gloss over that part. But it was an ugly death a painful death but he didn't just die for me but he died for you he, he died for everybody in here all of you all of your stuff all of your hang-ups all of your hurts all of your habits he died for all of it it was an ugly cross there's beauty and ugly. Amen. Can we thank God for that word one more time? Amen. My God. So, so my, my, my all my, my ministers, ministers in training, we, we, we going we gonna to study his tape. We're going to pull it out. We're going to study his tape, but you're going to see some 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 things that you learned at EK Bailey, the stories, the the pulling in, and and the things of making it relevant, and making he he did a wonderful job of painting the picture in our mind. Amen. And that that's that's the beauty of preaching. Preaching is an art, whether y'all realize it or not. Amen. 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 Real quickly, before you leave on the night, we, we, I want us to take communion as two churches come together on the night. I want us to do that. 
one of it's something I'm, I'm I'm God just laid in my heart to be very deliberate and intentional about one tonight is these two churches coming together and we what we partake of the Lord's Supper on this Good Friday together kind of to seal the deal amen amen this may have been the first but i promise you that this won't be the last time that we get together amen amen and if you're leaving tonight and, and you got time we we've got our the stations of the cross out there right now 12 stations for you to go through so that you can get the full glimpse of everything that transpired during this whole Passion Week all the way up to Good Friday. And guess what? We know on Sunday that tomb, that tomb won't be closed on Sunday. They got they gotta roll that, they gotta roll the stone away. Amen. Do that. Can I have my deacons come up for front now? Come come up front now. We just want to serve you and Pastor Trey, I'm going to ask you to come up. Go on, get us a couple of sips of water. Go on, go on, go on. Catch your breath, catch your breath, catch your breath. You you worked hard tonight, Doc. I'm, I'm going to take you down to McDonald's. I'm going to get you uh, 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 10 chicken nuggets and, and two different sauces. And two different sauces, amen. 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 The Bible challenges us that uh, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, for us to examine ourselves. So I want us to just to take a moment on this Good Friday um, to just check yourself. Uh, young people say, "Check yourself before you wreck yourself." So if you 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 got uh, you got issues, you got issues with somebody, you got all with somebody hatred, bitterness in you, then let the bread and the cup go by. Go and make it right before you, because when we come here, this this is about reconciliation. This is about what transpired on the cross over 2,000 years ago. So let's just pray, and then we're going to ask God just to search us before we go any further. Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, and we just ask you now to um, to search us, search us from the inside out. And Lord, if you know there's any reason or anything that's inside of us that we know that we're not right and that you're showing us right now, that person that we need to be reconciled, reconciled with, God, that you would just give us the courage and strength to let it go by. And help us to leave our gift at the altar and go make it right with our brother or our sister. Search us now, God, and have your way. Now, Father, we ask you just to bless the elements of the bread, which is symbolic of your body, the fruit of vine, which is symbolic of your blood. As we partake on the night, we just ask you to bless as these two churches come together. That we want to honor you. It's in Jesus' name.
been served. Hey, man. Keep going. Keep going. Is the Lord all that? Jesus would then institute what we now know as the Last Supper. He took the bread and he broke it. He blessed it and said, take ye and eat for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Let us now all eat together. On that same night, he took the fruit of vine. He said, this is my blood that covers your sin. Come now, let us drink together. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. What a wonderful night. I, I, I want to I thank you publicly. I already said it to you privately, but, but thank you for just accepting the invitation to come. Amen. 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 I, I, I am, I'm trying, and we're, we're, we're early in our relationship, but I'm trying to create the brotherhood amongst the clergy. And saying that, hey, that we, we, we got to walk together. If we want our people to walk together, then we got to walk together. Amen. And, and, so, and so often, so often, we want to be the exception instead of being the example. And so we got to be the example so, and not the exception. So I, I thank God for everybody that came out tonight and just took time out. Of, I, I know it's Good Friday, but, but I need to let you know that it, it's a little bit more than Good Friday on the night. It's just a little bit more. It's, it's two churches that come together. He don't, want, he don't want my members. I don't want his members. We secure in that. Amen. But if you're going to have fellowship, there's got to be more than one fellow in the ship. Let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I, I want to sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, uh, thank Pastor God Lock. Um, he, he did what he knew how to get to my heart. He invited me out to lunch one day. And uh, that's all I needed. Amen. <laughs> Uh, but I do appreciate, like I said earlier, his support um, has been second to none. Uh, he gets nothing out of supporting. Amen. Uh, he was at our concert for our anniversary. He just popped and sent me a text. It's like, hey, man, I'm here. And I appreciate a pastor like that with his heart. Uh, and I'm grateful. You all are lucky. You all are lucky. And you could have invited any pastor in the city. Um, but you invited us, uh, and you invited me, and for that I'm grateful. On purpose. Amen. On purpose. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. 
Now may the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible. You. May he give you traveling grace down the highways and byways. May you lay in the bed tonight and think of the beauty of that ugly cross. And may you get ready for Resurrection Sunday because he got up out of the grave. Amen. God bless you. Love y'all. Great design. If you have time, take a look at the exhibit. It's a beautiful exhibit. Amen. The stations of the cross out there if you want to go through the stations of the cross. Amen.